welcome to the fifth of our Holy Week series on this Good Friday as we continue to focus on God's amazing love. Let us pray. Lord, it seems strange to call this day on which you suffered and died on the cross Good Friday. But Lord, we thank you for the love it this day represents and reveals, your cross represents and reveals. Thank you for the forgiveness of sin that it makes available and the restored relationship with God that it makes possible. So Lord, continue to speak to us through your word and by your spirit as we turn to you now and as we hear your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now Rory is going to read from John chapter 3. The third chapter of the Gospel according to St John, beginning at the 16th verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is the word of our Lord. Let us pray. Father, on this day, we pray that your Holy Spirit would help us to understand something more of your amazing love for us and for others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Why? The word is a question in itself. And it's also a word we use to start many questions. Why are you late? Why did you do that? Why, why, why? It's the word used by the Jewish leaders as they passed judgment on Jesus and said that he deserved to die. It's the word used by Pilate when he said Jesus was innocent and wanted to release him. The Jewish leaders had been scheming to have Jesus put to death and they had seized the opportunity when Judas agreed to betray him. Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane by a mob who had been sent by the chief priests and elders of the people. He was brought to the house of the high priest where he was questioned and where people made false accusations against him. Despite all their efforts, they were unable to find any evidence against him. At daybreak, the Jewish leaders were frustrated and exasperated. Finally, they asked Jesus, if he was the Messiah. After his response came a follow-up question, are you the Son of God? Jesus replied, you say that I am. They immediately accused Jesus of blasphemy and said he deserved to die. We have the why of condemnation in their judgment. Why do we need any other witnesses? We ourselves heard him say it. The scene then moves as they bring Jesus to Pilate, the Roman governor. The Jewish leaders presented their arguments as they tried to persuade Pilate to condemn Jesus. Pilate listened to the case. He questioned Jesus and came to the conclusion that Jesus was innocent. He told the chief priests and the people I find no basis for a charge against this man. The Jewish leaders tried again to persuade and pressurise Pilate to condemn Jesus. But he repeated his judgement that Jesus was innocent of the charges they had brought against him. Pilate normally released a prisoner during the feast of the Passover as a goodwill gesture to the Jews. So he suggested releasing Jesus. The Jewish leaders didn't want Jesus released. They wanted him dead. So they persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas, who was in prison for murder and for his involvement in a rebellion. Pilate made a further attempt to release Jesus. But the crowd called out, crucify him, crucify him. And that brings us to the second why question, the question asked by Pilate, which indicates Jesus was innocent. Why 
What crime has this man committed? I have found in him no grounds for the death penalty. Therefore I will have him punished and then release him. But with loud shouts, they insistently demanded that he be crucified and their shouts prevailed. Pilate decided to grant their demand. Jesus was condemned to death and led the way to be crucified. The why of the Jewish leaders, why do we need other witnesses? We ourselves have heard it and they passed judgment on Jesus and said he's, he deserved to die. The why of Pilate, why, what crime has this man committed? I found in him no grounds for the death penalty. Pilate said Jesus was innocent, but still handed him over to be crucified. Neither of these whys provide us with a real answer why Jesus was crucified. The answer is given in the Bible and it is revealed clearly in John 3. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Why did Jesus suffer and die on the cross? He suffered and died on the cross because of God's amazing love. He suffered and died so that those who believe in him, those who put their trust in him, shall not perish but have eternal life. The good news of the gospel, the incredible good news of the gospel, is that we can be saved, that we can know a restored relationship with God through faith in Jesus and his sacrificial death on the cross. Jesus' crucifixion didn't provide universal or automatic salvation. Christ's death on the cross is of no benefit to people until they believe. We must accept what he has made available to us by repenting of our sin and trusting in him as our saviour. A restored relationship with God is only possible because of what God has done for us in Christ. Our relationship with God must be based and only based on what Christ has done for us on the cross. Without any thought of our goodness, our merit, or what we have done for God or for others. In that relationship, once we've put our faith and trust in God, we are to pursue holiness and grow in holiness. We are to live for God and to serve God in the power of his Holy Spirit. There's a song that says, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame but holy trust on Jesus' name on this Good Friday. Are we wholly trusting in Jesus' name? The one who suffered and died on the cross. Have we come to him, asked him to forgive our sins and asked him to be our saviour? If we haven't done that, I really want to encourage you to do that. As you admit your sin, as you repent of your sin and as you ask the Lord to forgive you and ask him to be your saviour and friend as you give your life to him. And when you do that, the Holy Spirit comes to live within us and he then encourages us to live for God. He equips us as we seek to serve God and fulfil his will. Think of it this way. Another verse from a hymn. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. Trust in him. Accept what he's made available to us. Believe it. Live it. And make it known. Lord, help us on this day to focus in on your amazing love. To focus on those words, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. And so, Lord, may we not only be people who have put our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus as our Saviour, but may we also live for him, 
seek to serve you and to fulfill your will in the power of your spirit. And through all that we do, may we seek to make Christ known, that others can come to know and to experience for themselves God's amazing love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the collect for today. Merciful God, who gave your Son to suffer the shame of the cross, save us from hardness of heart, that seeing him who died for us, we may repent, confess our sin, and receive your overflowing love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing. Christ draw you to himself and grant that you find in his cross a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope and the assurance of sins forgiven. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Just to remind you that at 12 o'clock today online there will be a service of readings, reflections and hymns. Just, and I do encourage you to join with us in that service as well. But may the Lord bless you on this Good Friday and I hope and pray that you have been encouraged and inspired by our Holy Week series. Blessings. <laughs>